So in this video, we're going to go through another example. Uh, but this time, we're going to test at the 1% level whether there was any association between age group and favorite subject. Uh, this time, we've got English, maths, and science. Uh, we've got the categories under 13, 13 to 16, and over 16. OK? So first things first, this is my observed table. Or these are my observed frequencies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the table by writing a total row, and a total column. OK. So 25 plus 27 plus 21, so that's 73. 26 plus 14 plus 31 is 71. 13 plus 11 plus 32 is 56. So 56 plus 71 plus 73 is 200. We've got 25 plus 26 plus 13 is 64. 27 plus 14 plus 11 is 52. 21 plus 31 plus 32 is 84. And just do a quick check, adding those three together to get you 200. Yeah, all good. OK, so the next thing that we do, we need a, an expected frequency table. So we can have expected, and we can have English, maths, science. Just going to abbreviate these. So under 13, uh, 13 to 16, and over 16. So let's have greater than 16, and I'm going to have a total row and a total column. These are for checking purposes, OK? OK, it's good to double check that your values are correct at this stage. Right, so how do we calculate these values for the expected frequencies? Well, what we do is we're assuming that the two events are independent. So we're going to get the corresponding value for English for under 13s by doing the row um, total, which is 73, times by the column total, which is 64, and dividing that by the total, 200. So this is how I get the corresponding value that goes in here. 73 times 64 divided by 200 is 23.36. Right, so here we've got 73 times 52 divided by 200. 73 times 52 divided by 200 is 18.98. So for this value here, we've got 73 times 84 divided by 200, which is 30.66. Right, add those three together. And we get 73, which corresponds with that value there. So that's all good. Right, this one next, which will be 71 times 64 divided by 200. So 22.72. Then for this value, 71 times 52 divided by 200. So 18.46. Then this one will be 71 times 84 divided by 200, which will be 29.82. Right, let's add those three together. 18.46 plus 22.72. And we get 71, which corresponds with that number there. Excellent. Right, this one next. 56 times 64 divided by 200 is 17.92. Right, I'm going to add up those values there. And that's 64, which tallies with that number there. Excellent. Right, let's go for this one then. So that's 56 times 52 divided by 200. So that's 14.56. Let's add up that column. Fifty-two, which matches that one. So this one. 56 times 84 divided by 200 is 23.52. Right, let's add those up, that column. 
we get 84, which matches that one. So I'm just going to do it in the row, just to, as a final double check. That's 56, which matches that one. So perfect. OK, happy with that now. So that's my expected frequencies table. I now need the contributions table. OK, so we're going to need under 13, 13 to 16, and greater than 16. And we're going to have English, maths, give yourself a bit of space, science. OK, right, so remember that the calculation for this is in the formula booklet, page 11 that mid-page. So the chi-squared statistic is the sum of the observed frequencies, take away the expected frequencies, all squared, divided by the expected frequencies. So to get the corresponding value that goes in there, I need the observed number, 25, take away the expected number, 23.36, I square that and divide it by the 23.36. So 25, put in a bracket, 25, take away 23.36 squared, divided by 23.36. And I'm going to write these two five decimal places, so 0.11514. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, so let's go for this one next. So that will be 27, take away 18.98, all squared, divided by 18.98. So in here we're getting 3.38885. Right, this one next. So we have 21. Take away 30.66 all squared divided by 30.66. And we get 3.04356. Right, this one next. We're going to have 26. Take away the 22.72 squared divided by 22.72. And we get 0. 47352. Okay, this one next then. Um, so we've got 14 take away 18.46 squared divided by 18.46. 1.07755. Right, this one next. We've got 31. Take away 29.82 squared divided by 29.82. Not point not four six six nine. Right, this one next. So thirteen take away seventeen point nine two squared divided by thirty sorry seventeen point nine two. So we get one point. Three five zero eight zero. Right, that one next. We've got eleven. Take away fourteen point five six squared divided by fourteen point five six. And we get naught point eight seven zero four four. Right, last one. Thirty two. Take away 23.52 squared divided by 23.52 gets me 3.05741. Okay, right. So now that I've got all my contributions, I need the chi squared statistic, which is the sum of them all. So now I've got to add them all together. So 0.11514 plus 3.38885 plus 3.04356. So I'm not going to write them all out into one calculator display in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to get the sum for that. 
So 6.54755. Then I'm just going to do the next row. Okay, so it breaks it up, hopefully meaning I make less errors. The next one is 1.59776. Then we get 1.35080 plus 0.87044 plus 3.05741. So 5.27865. Now I add those three together. Right, I'm getting 13.42396, so let's write that's 13.4 to 3 sig fig. Right, that's my chi-squared statistic. Okay, so I don't need that anymore, or that, or that. So now that I've done that, I've done all that laborious work, and uh, the next thing is the hypothesis test. So, H0, there is no association between age group and favourite subject. H1, there is an association between age group and favourite subject. Okay, right, so we've got that in place. Now, um, we need to calculate the number of degrees of freedom, nu. So for nu equals, so we've got the number of rows, take away one, so that's three, take away one times by the number of columns take away 1, so 3 take away 1. So we get 2 times 2, so 4. So that's my degrees of freedom. The 1%, because we're looking at 1% significance level, critical value is... So we go to our tables on page 13 in the formula booklet. We're looking at the right-hand side. We're looking at 1%, so the 1% column. And we're going down to new is equal to 4. And we get 13.28. So 13.28. And our value is just over that. Okay? So 13.4 is greater than 13.28. So the result is significant. So we reject H0. So we then need to write our conclusion that's non-committal and in context. There is evidence to suggest there is an association between age group and favourite subject. Okay, and so that is how we can do the complete chi-squared contingency table test. Starting off from the observed frequencies, we calculate the expected frequencies using the totals. The totals here are for checking purposes. Then we use those two tables to create the contributions table. We then add up all of our contributions to get the chi-squared statistic. And then we perform the hypothesis test comparing your chi-squared statistic against the critical value that's read from the formula booklet tables.